Yo, what is up guys? So for today, we're going to be talking about Ghost of Tsushima Legends. Specifically, I'm going to be doing the guide for all of the raid acts. I'm going to start with Act 1, obviously. Act 2 and 3, I will put the description below when those videos are available. But essentially, this is going to just be an overview of the encounters. There's going to be a lot of encounters. And my thoughts on all, like the raid and all of it, is going to be a separate video. So if you want my thoughts on it, go look for that video if it's up. If it's not, again, I'm currently making those videos right now. So, the first encounter is going to be a rice field with a bunch of eggs. Let's call them eggs. And if you guys remember in the beginning of the raid, it said that enemies explode when they die. So essentially, kill the enemies that are there. Kill them around the eggs. Once the eggs explode, they'll either reveal an obelisk or nothing at all. So just kill each of the eggs. What I would recommend you do is kill all the eggs because I don't remember off the top of my head which ones were the true ones and which ones were not. So just kill all the eggs and then from there uh, reset it because she it's, it's timed. Once you figure out which ones that the eggs are the obelisks are in, it's make them explode and then take them all the way up to the flesh doors in the front. Once you collect I think two, two or three, the the encounter is done and the door opens one thing i want to know is the secret chests i'm going to be doing that in a separate video if not hopefully i can do it in a separate video but i don't want to do it in this just because there's so much information for the raid that it's just gonna be better to just do it in a separate video also this is going to be just something for you guys to know the trees that have these like red sack that is where the enemy spawn so if you're wondering like where the enemies are spawning or you want to like corral them or do something like crowd control ability that's where they spawn so you could really corral them into whatever you want or just stop them from coming if you're like really getting annoyed by them so that's pretty much it for encounter one encounter two is jump puzzles so essentially jump from platform to platform while dodging the red orbs since they will not only trap you but if no one's if no one frees you, you'll go down. So you don't really have to worry about this one. This one's not that crazy. Honestly, just uh, at this point, the game's like introducing you to different mechanics and stuff. Like I think at this portion, you, they show you the button that on um, like that lights up a, a platform. And then from there, it shows you to this encounter, which it's just rock to rock to rock. And the red orbs will actually entrap you. And if, the, if you, you don't get out in time, it actually kills you you could use your sword you could use your bow or abilities so if you're not like close to your friend just hit them with the bow and arrow and they'll be good don't freak out because this ability or this particular mechanic is going to be used a lot and if you freak out it's going to get rough but again if you have a ronin and you're way too far to, to heal them obviously you can heal them with the ronin there's a few things you can do but honestly just this one really shouldn't i shouldn't really have to explain this one it's not that crazy of an encounter so the third encounter is i don't know the top of it i didn't like write down the names so it's the the one with the door so essentially there's gonna be a blood pool and the or blood well i was there defending it mostly because in my mind if the enemies were in the blood well a we wouldn't be able to like comfortably put our stacks of souls in there and b i thought that maybe they could take our stacks away so i was like fuck it i'll just get this out of way i'm gonna stay here so i can defend and just in case they can take our stacks away we'll do that if they don't take your stacks away and you guys are really competent or you guys just feel comfortable enough to not die then i would suggest all four of you go around and essentially do the mechanic which is a a blood touched enemy will spawn once you kill them you will get a stack of souls i think 20 being the most you can like have once you get that you will have to stand in the blood circle near the door each stack fills the door in front once you complete enough of the encounter the door will open that's pretty much it like i said you can have one person defend while all the other guys are getting stacks or if the enemies don't take the stacks away and you're comfortable enough to fight off the enemies while you're in the blood pool then by all means all four of you can do it 
it's just like I said, I, I wanted to be sa uh, like safe, uh, what is it? Safe than sorry. So that's what I went with. The fourth encounter, this encounter will, ha obviously I'm reading from like a script. Uh, I wrote this like real fast. So this encounter, you will have two teams of uh, helping the other team make platforms. So have two friends stand on those platforms while the other two go out. Do not worry about the red orbs since you can just use the boat to take them out. Like I said, once the other team goes to their platform, the other can go on. So basically to really summarize this, you're going to have one team stay, stay behind and let the other team proceed. Once that happens, they're going to have their own button to press and then the other team will be able to proceed. So it's kind of like, kind of like hopscotch. This game has like, or not hopscotch. I'm sorry. It, uh, leapfrog this game does a lot of leapfrog which essentially is like all right we'll stay here while you guys go to the next area press the button okay now you guys can come over to this next area so you guys can press the buttons there honestly i'm gonna have the the footage up i don't have the footage of my friends unfortunately because they don't record so the other team that is opposite of mine i apologize but it's not that hard honestly so after that is the fifth encounter for this encounter everyone will get introduced to the attunement mechanic which again if you've done the story you will know exactly what i'm talking about it essentially means that everyone except one person gets a buff blue green and red these colors match a totem of the same color once everyone destroys their matching totem then you will unlock a door uh yeah that's really it i just there's really nothing else to explain each person gets a attunement once you get that attunement remember that you're the like green attunement or red attunement or blue attunement whatever it is fortunately we had our friend blue literally have the blue attunement so we just Im immediately knew he was blue so again this is probably going to be the part where people are going to get like annoyed because our me and my friends were just like f like just fumbling around especially in act two act two really goes hard on all of the mechanics but yeah, essentially just get all the attunements destroy all the totems and from there the door will open and at this point you'll be at the last encounter which essentially is pretty simple uh depends on your strengths and weaknesses so essentially the thing you have to do is you have to complete four challenges so depending on how comfortable you are with your fighting abilities your ranged abilities you will correspond to which ability or which challenge you should do so essentially the first the ones we had was we couldn't dodge we couldn't use uh, abilities and uh, we couldn't use ranged or quick quick fire weapons and for one challenge you had to kill you have to get kills with only ranged weapons so i'm pretty comfortable with not dodging just because i block and i do the perfect de deflection or whatever it's called I can do that reliably and not be nervous. So that's the one I chose. And then just choose whichever one you can do. Like no abilities. Can you fight with no abilities? Uh, the no ranged or quick fire weapons. That's another easy one that I could have done. And the kills with only range would be like a great one for a hunter. Since the hunter can use her super. Which is just almost like four kills. Or no wait. What is it? Three kills or five kills if you have the ability for it. So again this one's not that crazy it's actually probably one of my favorite encounters in the game and pretty much in any raid i've done mostly because it really depends on your, the person that you're playing or the person you are like for me like i said combat for me is not that challenging so for me i could have done the no dodging the no abilities the no range or quick fire i could have done pretty much any of these except the ranged weapons because i only have the bow again i i can hear people saying well you can use your your um your ghost weapons or a bow but to me the hunter was just like the easiest choice for that because that's all there are so i could have done it but it would just have been annoying and again the no dodging for me was just really simple i didn't, I didn't <laughs> it's just simple so that's really it uh, i'm gonna be doing my thoughts on the first act after i do this video and just to guys give you like a little sneak peek, I actually really loved the first encounter. I think the, the first uh, act was great. It was a lot of fun. And honestly, you should have hear you should have heard me and my friends. We were wilding, like comparing this to Destiny 2. Uh mostly be mostly Destiny 2, because uh if you guys don't know the, the raid team that I was playing with used to be my old raid team from Destiny 2, my old clanmates. 
the only reason I don't raid with them in Destiny 2 anymore is because they don't play Destiny 2 anymore. So it was a lot of fun comparing this to Destiny 2, which is gonna be fun to make that video because I think I think Ghost of Tsushima for their first time blew away Destiny Destiny 2 like by a landslide. And I will make I'll I'll express my thoughts even more in that video. But let me know what your guys' thoughts in the comments below is. Personally, I love this act. I think this was the coolest act. I think the second act is a little bit rougher. Uh, but overall, I did enjoy it a lot. Let me know. Again, I would love to have a conversation with you guys. If you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets, links are in the description below. Thank you, everyone, for the support. I really do appreciate it. If I missed something, let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, I didn't do the the chests just because i think those are videos for themselves so hopefully i'll do that video if not there's a bunch of other people that have that type of content as well so i will see you guys later